let's look at Python web programming. We're going to start with a program, um, a game called Nim, where you take rocks. Um, usually the game ends when one person draws the last rock and they either win by taking the last one or they lose by taking the last one. And so we're going to create a game right here and we're going to make it on the web and so you can see it. So my web server, I have Apache installed. Apache already has exact CGI set for the current um, directory I'm in, which is a uh, var www.html. And so I'm going to create my NIM game right here. So do nano nim.cgi. Now this is going to be a CGI program, which means it's Python. Um, I need to start out with my normal Python string, which is user bin. Um, I can either do Python or I can do env Python. If you have multiple versions, you want to find the ones in the environment. All right, so I'm going to uh, import a couple of libraries, CGI, so I can do some CGI stuff. CGI TB, so I can get error checking taken care of, and random, so I can randomly generate numbers. So I do the CGI TB, I want to enable this so that whenever I have exceptions and crashes, it will tell me what they were. Okay. Now, the first thing I usually do in a CGI program is I print the header. And that is so I don't have any problems later. Um, if I don't print a header and it sends data over and it crashes, then you get nothing. It makes it very difficult to troubleshoot. So I print the header. That's content type. And I'm going to do a, a text HTML. And the header ends when you have a new line. So this print statement right here um, will print the text and a new line. And then the print statement will add a new, another new line. So it'll add one blank line between the header and the rest of my stuff that I print out. So let's start with a start over button. We like to make forms. So my start over button is going to be a simple form where as you print form my action that's the script that gets called whenever this button is pressed and we're going to call it a uh, nim.cgi since my program is called nim it'll basically call itself and the method it's going to use is a get method normally you want to use post but because we want to troubleshoot and see things, get is more helpful. Because then it goes, gets in all the variables get included on the command line. Although there are no variables for this one right here. So I'm going to print my input button. And that's a submit button. And if I have no name, then it won't send a value over. I won't want to send over the value. It's just the value is just what gets displayed. Start over. So this basically just creates a button that I can press or put anywhere I want to. I'm going to be using it multiple times uh, because I want to be able to start over whenever I want to. So I close the form and that's it for the button. Whenever the button's pressed, it'll just reload the page. And we'll be good to go. All right, now I want to get information from my um, CGI. So it's the CGI module up here. And I want to get information, so I'm going to get information from CGI module. So I'll put that in my form variable. CGI field storage. All right. So I can use that later on whenever I need to access variables. I could have put that one before the function up here, but I didn't put it right here. This is not matter of the order. All right, now I'm going to start printing my, my page. So if you wanted to, you can start with the official doc type HTML headers if you want, but you don't really need it. I'll put it there anyway. Um, you can also put in a, a HTML tag to start your HTML. We'll go ahead and do that. Uh, if you want, you can print a, a header and put a, a title right on my header and close it really quickly. So this is a uh, nim. Yeah, 
does close the head as well. And now I'm going to open up the body. So I'll open the body. And if you wanted to, you can include your CSS or JavaScript in here as well, just inline. You just have to make sure you print out the JavaScript instead of displaying it as JavaScript. All right, so at the top of the body, I'm going to print out um, my little title here. It says uh, Nim. Let's see, Nim is a game where you pick up stones. There's a nice, great description. Okay, so the game is, if I were to uh, make this executable, I could run it right now, and it should run. It wouldn't display much. It might be kind of boring, but it would run. So let's just make it run right now. So save that. That's Nim. Um, the first thing I need to do is I need to change the permissions. So chmod 755 Nim. So it's executable. I can run it from the command line. Nim. It runs. Um, you can see there is a blank line after the header, and then the rest of the HTML gets printed out. And that's basically how a CGI program works. Um, I have SE Linux turned on, so I need to also set the SE Linux context type. So I do ls minus capital Z, look at the directory below me. I can see that I have this HTTP the sys script exec t, and that's the type I want to set. So I do ch con minus t, just paste that right there, and this is my nim.cgi. And if I were to go over the web browser, and um, nim.cgi, I can see it loads, it says nim, a game where you pick up stones. Okay, so that's good. We have it working right now, it's displaying. Now it's time to finish the game. So nano on my nim. All right, I print out the title, and now I want to start doing some logic. First thing I want to do is figure out, are we approaching this game for the first time, or have we? Each time you load a CGI script, you have to recheck your environment, because each time it assumes it's starting for the very first time, and you have to go and check to see if there are any variables to indicate that this is not the first time. It's not stateful. It's very different from normal programming. You have to be able to tell it variables to keep track of what's going on. So I'm going to figure out how many stones I have left. Get stones. Well, how many stones do I have? Well, if there is a stones variable, which there won't be the very first time I load it, then we know we want to get that as our stones. But we want the stones to be an integer, so stones equals int. We want to grab it from our form, and it's going to be in the variable stones. And it's going to be the value we're getting. Value. All right, so make sure that looks right. We've got int typecast on this form stones value being typecast as int, so stones being set to an integer. If, however, we don't have a stones variable, we need to set the stones variable. Stones equals, and the way we set it is we just randomly generate a number. So random, rand int, and we want to pick a number between 30 and 40. That sounds good. So they have some random number to start counting down from. It makes it harder for humans if they don't know what they're doing. All right, now we need to see how many times, or how many stones were picked up the last time we, we went through. Let's see how many stones were picked. Obviously, the very first time, you should have zero. Nothing. You shouldn't have anything there. There should be no variable. So we want to do a check again. If picked in form. So that means we're coming through this page again for a later time. Then we want to have our picked equal to basically the same thing as the stones. We're an int, a typecast of the typecast, the variable we get from our form. Oops. And we 
have a value there. So we grab a value, it's going to come over to a string, we need to convert it to an integer, and then we're ready to go. If we don't get one, then we want to initialize the variable to be zero. So either way, we have a variable picked that has a value that's an integer. All right. So first we want to look at it and decide, well, did somebody pick something? And if they did, that means the last time somebody picked something, it would have been me. Because then we're going to have me pick, and then the computer, if the computer has anything left. All right. So display information about the last round. So if we have a value of picked, so basically if picked is greater than zero, it'll have either have a value of one or two, because you can pick either one or two. So if it has a value, then what we want to do is um, print um, well, let's see. Your, which one? Let's see. No, let's do H, H3, much more. Your pick. So. This computer speaking saying, well, your pick, this is what you did. What did you do? Print there were the stones and you picked percent D. All right. So basically there were stones, stones, and you picked that many of them. Okay, so I didn't make a mistake there, we should be fine. All right, now I want to change the number of stones so we can keep on the game. Stones equals stones minus picked. So now we subtract them off of it, we're good to go. I want to print how many are there left? Print. There are percent D stones left. Okay. And that number is stones. All right. Now, at this point, we can decide do we want to end the game or not. Um, if there are less than zero stones left, then we are, well, if there's zero less, then we're done, right? So if stones is less than or equal to zero, we're going to end the game, and we're going to print out a congratulations message, print you won. Yay. Good job for winning. Now we also want to print out our start over menu. Start over. That's the function we created earlier at the top. And we are basically done with this part. Now, if picked is zero, or if there's no if there's no stones at this point, we want to be able to just keep going. So we want to figure out where we're at. This would be uh, the computer's turn. So we assume we picked one. Now it's computer's turn. So we'll say Computer's turn. All right, so if picked is greater than zero, because we don't want computer picking first, if it's greater than zero and stones is greater than zero, so we're still playing the game and somebody already picked, so that means we get to pick first. Print. This is the computer speaking. My turn. So probably want to put a H3 here. H3, close that. All right. So now the computer gets to pick. Now, how many does the computer want to pick? It can randomly pick some number one, two, or one or two, but we want the computer to pick a good number. So we'll have a good pick, and that's going to be equal to stones mod. 
three. So that means it'll either pick zero, one, or two. It can't pick zero, so I have to fix that. But it's going to pick one, it's going to leave it a remainder of, well, it wants it to be a multiple three after it takes the stones so that it'll win. But if um, my good pick is less than one, that means it picks zero, then we're just going to randomly pick some number. We're going to say good pick equals random rand int either one or two. So between one and two. And then it's going to tell you what it did. So print there were percent D stones and I picked percent D. All right, so now we need to say how many stones there were. Stones and good pick. All right, so now the computer tells you what it did. We're ready to go on the next step. So now that the computer has picked some, we need to subtract from stones. So stones equals stones minus good pick. You might start asking, well, what happens if there's a negative number? There won't be, because it's going to use a module, use modulus three up here, and so it'll always pick a good number that's not negative. All right, so now we're going to tell you the status. There are percent D stones left. So now we know that computer has picked I've picked, now it's my turn to pick again. If the computer hasn't won, of course. So let's check. So if stones is less than or equal to zero, it'd never be less than, but we'll put that in there. Then we're gonna print, I won, one. So the computer can gloat because it beat you. For me, start over. So we have that start over button there. And now we are ready for the next step, which is to, well, for our pick, our actual pick, because we haven't picked yet. So if stones is still greater than zero, which it will be on the very first time, then we want to pick, we want to pick some stones. Page three, pick stones. All right, here you go. Print. There are percent D stones left. So you want to know how many pick? Now we get to tell the user how many, what their choices are. They either get to pick one or two. So how many stones should they pick? Well, the best choice is always to pick the number that will lead you with a multiple three. That is if you want the last one. How many do you want to pick? Question mark. Break that. And we go to the next line. All right, now we need to let's display a form. Picking form. All right, so we need to have our form. And the action is whatever CGI or whatever program is being called when you run this. So it's going to be nim.cgi. And we want to use a method of get again. Once again, that's so we'll put all the information on the command line. If we didn't want to show the command line or on the uh, URL line, we would use post instead. Then we want to have a form um, input value. So this type is, um, 
Well, let's pass over the number of stones first. So make this one hidden. And we'll say stones. Oops. Name equals stones. And the value equals whatever number we have. We'll percent D. We'll pass over the number of stones. Alright, now we want to give them a button to press to select one. Input type, this is going to be a submit button, submit, and name equals picked, and the value equals one. So it'll be a button that just has the number one printed on it. Now, if there are at least two stones, we want to have another button that says two. Because we only picking two stones and there's only one stone, it's a little weird. So let's say if um, stones is greater than one, then we're going to print input type equals submit name equals picked. And it'll only use whichever one, the only one that gets sent over, the name value pair that gets sent over is the one that gets pressed. Value equals two. So they only see that one if that one's available. All right, then we're gonna close the form, print. And at this point, we want to give them another button to start over if they really want to start over. And let's close our page. There we go. Excel, save that. You can look around and do an LS minus couple C. You can see that it is has the correct permissions right here. And it is the correct type. So let's clear this and let's go back to our web page and we will reload. All right, there are 35 stones left. How many do you want to pick? Well, we want to pick the number that will get us to win. And if it's 35, we want to make sure that it's 33 left. So we pick two and then we come to an error right here where it crashes. And we have to figure out what did we do wrong? And apparently it doesn't like that rand int thing. That's probably because I get it a capital I. So we we'll go back and edit that real quick. Rand int. And that was in the good picks for the X out there. Now let's try this again. Reload the page. And okay. So I picked two, I picked one. There are 32 stones left, I picked two. And now basically I just pick whatever it doesn't pick. And eventually, hmm, I win. So there we go. That's how you can make a CGI based NIM game in Python.